Congress. Turn it up. Build up the confidence. We have a very successful Congress. We have done three things. First, we have decided on the line of our party, which is boldly to, mo to mobilize the masses and expand the people's forces so that under the leadership of our party, they will defeat the Japanese aggressors, liberate the whole people, and build a new democratic China. In propagating the line of Congress is to build up the confidence of the whole party and the entire people in the certain triumph of the revolution. We must also arouse the political consciousness of the entire people so that they may willingly and gladly fight together with us for victory. We should fire the whole people in the conviction that China belongs to none of the reactionaries but to the Chinese people. There is an ancient Chinese fable called The Foolish Old Man Who Removed the Mountain. His house faced south and beyond his doorway stood the two great peaks, Tai Hing and Wang Wu, obstructing the way. With great determination, he led his sons in digging up these mountains, hoe in hand. Another gray beard known as the wise old man saw them and they and said, Dis how silly of you to do this. Possible for you to dig up those two huge mountains. The foolish man replied, when I die, my sons will carry on. When they die, their grandsons and their sons and their grandsons and so on to infinity. High as they are, the mountains cannot grow any higher without with every bit we dig. They will be much lower. Why can't we clear them away? Having refuted the old man's wrong view, he went on digging every day, unshaken in his conviction. God was moved by this, and he sent down two angels who carried the mountains away on their backs. Today, two big mountains lie like a dead weight on, Ch on the Chinese people. One is imperialism, the other feudalism. If they stand up and dig together with us, why can't the mountains be cleared away? <laughs> yes, yes, yes! <laughs> I told you they were starting the revolution. I didn't deny that. I said he'd get arrested before he started. You're wrong about that, too. What? Yeah, look, there's a clip from Paul from Moose New Center Pod. Yes, that was Mao Zedong quickly gaining power in China. You heard it here first, folks. The revolution China, b led by Mao, has officially begun. You know, um, you kind of owe me five bucks now. Few understood the meaning of the start of the Cultural Revolution. They had no idea what it would lead to or what it would do to China. High school students in Beijing formed supporting groups called the Red Guards. When these groups were approved by Mao, more and more formed. Mao's dream was to bring together a communist state. He wanted his Red Guards to control all social, political, and economic activities of each group. Mao felt that the educated citizens were, being, were becoming the elite, and intellectual was considered anyone with a full middle school education. Therefore, Red Guards attacked teachers. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Weisgerber, can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah, sure. Artists and intellectuals. The equation of a hyperbola with center at each k with horizontal transverse axes is x minus h to the square. I'm okay. It was mc square, but what if f was mc square? What? They wanted to rid China of foreign items, therefore they threw out Western medicines and burnt books. They were even so anti-capitalist that one day on a bus they accused a man of being capitalist and they broke his skull. Wei Shiqi, who was chosen as Mao's successor, 
was accused by radicals of being China's number one capitalist rotor. Considered a traitor, he was put in jail, where he later died. Lin Biao, head of the People's Liberation Army, was mass successor after Louis' death.